Welcome to Cairo Author Insights. I'm super excited to have Dr. Christina Bjorndahl, which is an amazing um, name, an amazing author, a best-selling author. I love the books that you've written, The Essential Diet, and also Beyond the Label, 10 Steps to Improve Mental Health. Um, and as a naturopathic physician using naturopathic medicine, this is a breakthrough, certainly I believe, because there are so few practitioners from the naturopathic, from the wellness and vitalistic approach in bringing knowledge, wisdom, and experience to mental health. So I love the fact that you're a naturopathic doctor and you have this specialization. In fact, I'd say a gift for mental health. Welcome, Dr. Christina. Yeah, great. Thanks so much for, for having me. It's great to be here with you. Oh, look, it's, it's, I'm actually really excited about this. And I'd like to start just by an introduction to a little bit about who you are in terms of your background, the, how you've got into naturopathy, and where that led in terms of this, this amazing gift you have to work you know, with people with mental health. Right. Yeah. So I haven't always been a naturopathic doctor. And like many people who are in this health space, we, some, we sometimes come to it through our own journeys. And that's certainly the case with me. So I have lived experience with anxiety and depression. And um, I have had several suicide attempts. And I also have had psychosis. So then the label became bipolar disorder type one. And so it was through my own journey of trying to find solutions to these labels that I've been given that I discovered the natural approach and, and eventually went back to school myself and became a naturopathic doctor. And I really feel that I want people to understand that there is options for them. And I know for myself, when I was initially struggling, the only option that was ever presented to me was this, was the pharmaceutical option. And at times that can be necessary, but it's not always getting to the root of the problem, right? Every time I went off an antidepressant, I would end up right back where I started. And so in my mind, it wasn't actually solving anything. And so it wasn't until I, I took this a more holistic approach and worked with a naturopathic doctor myself that I found that I, I was able to be free from some of the terrible symptoms that was, were plaguing me from an anxiety and a depression perspective. So that's, that's kind of this really short version of sort of how I became a naturopathic doctor, but it was really through my own struggles. Look, that's, that's so common for a lot of people is they, they're drawn to a professional degree because it serves them in their own journey, their own healing. And they yeah. that allows them to bring wisdom into that, to the relationship with that clinical setting. So your own experience has become an opportunity to understand, to empathize, to sympathize, to have been in that situation and experience all of those things it brings wisdom into the consultation, not only a therapeutic or clinical capability. So I think that's a that's why it's such a gift for you to be able to 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 work in this area. So I think that's a really mm -hmm. understanding to have. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is definitely, it, there's definitely a difference between somebody who's read about it in a book and somebody who's actually lived through it. So that brings a really different perspective to, you know, the work that I do one-on-one -on -one with patients. Yeah, and I think that's, that's important for practitioners to know and understand as well. They will have their own unique understanding, their, their own experiences that, that allows them to have that, that personal capability to, to serve an impact because of their own journey. Um, and they'll often attract people into their practices with, the, uh, with similar presentations to be able to help get based on their own individual experiences. Mm -hmm. That's right. And I, and I would encourage people to, I mean, you, you, one of the things that I often hear is, oh, you know, you're so, um, you know, part of the reason I, I chose you as a clinician is because of, of your openness about sharing your experience. And, and for many years, I only shared about anxiety and, and depression. I, I kept the, the label and uh, bipolar disorder. I really, I had a lot of shame and, and stigma around that. So I, I wasn't out or public about that piece. Um, but even, even just what being, being willing to, to be a, a little bit vulnerable to express sort of your, your journey can really can, can help others um, connect with you and relate to you and 
And so I think that's an, an important piece because I don't, I mean, I think people are, are doing that a little bit more, but there's a lot of people that just sort of just say that, you know, where do they went to school and what, how, how more focusing on the achievements versus the heart of, of the batter. So. That's beautiful. And, and I do appreciate your, your vulnerability in both sharing that here and in, in, in your work because it has profoundly impacted people and, and, and created, created an opportunity to serve it at, at a far deeper level. In terms of you, so you've come from this background, you've, you've worked with a naturopathic doc, doctor, you've been able to toolkit yourself and move into a, a, a healthier, a, a better state and space. You've studied to become this doctor of naturopathy that's now able to serve and impact. How did you, as your own experiences led you to not only naturopathy, but to go deeper into that mental health process? So how did the study in the area of being a naturopathic go to so much deeper into this area of mental health? So I really went to school with one intent only, and that intention was to be able to serve people from, a, from being able to help them through the, the mental health piece of the puzzle. So everything for me was, that was really my one intent. And so everything that I did and the areas that I focused on in my studies was all with that end goal in mind. And uh, so I have, additional so doing the work at naturopathic school was really just it it laid the foundation but i have had to do additional training in other uh, counseling techniques to support what i do in in clinic now so i have additional training in gestalt psychotherapy and compassion focused therapy cognitive behavioral therapy and something called compassionate inquiry so these are other areas that i work that i utilize or tools that I utilize when working with people because I feel that most clinicians are focused on the physical level only and what are what are most of us trying to do when somebody's depressed we're all trying to get you out of that state right we're trying to to prevent you from experiencing and going through what it is that you need to perhaps go through to be able to get to the underlying piece of of why you might be suffering and, and the way that you can really be able to, to really heal is by looking, I think, at the, at the mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects of health, not just simply the physical level, which is, I think, part of the problem with the whole system is because everyone's stuck on that physical level, yes. right? That's a really important distinction is separating out the, that, that spiritual element that comes into it, the mental element, and, and so often we get caught in that we've got to change the physical aspect or even medicate to be able to change their state but when you create a total view of the person you have the opportunity to, to create a, a broader deeper impact and therefore a lasting benefit so i love the that universality you bring to your approach mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think it's really key it's yeah. really key because ultimately you know i mean a key question that i i ask most patients is on a scale of, and this is a very simple question, but on a scale of one to 10, how much do you love yourself? What's your sense of your self-esteem, your, your value, and, and your, you know, your sense of who you are? And so many people have such a low answer to that question. And to me, that's really the work that needs to be done because, because you are gonna be with you longer than anyone is going to be with you. And so we have to get the relationship right with yourself. And I know for, for me, um, and I mean, you know, it might seem simple, but when I was recovering from a suicide attempt, I realized that I, I really didn't like myself, right? I wasn't, I hadn't accepted the labels that I had been, been given and I was really at war with myself. And so how is a person going to operate in the world when they're at war with themselves, right? So you have to work, that, that to me was, that's a really key part of with mental health is asking the questions about what, what is the conversation that's going on inside your head? Who has the stage? Is it an inner critic or is it an inner cheerleader or champion? And how can we bring some compassion to these two parts of yourselves? And, and where did these two parts come from to begin with? Yeah, so, yeah. I think what's, uh, again, the thing I love about the book, the title Beyond the Label, we do tend to get labeled. Uh, you know, and you own that label. If, if, you, if you're given a diagnosis or a label, you're diagnosed depressed or 
anxious, then you say, I am an anxious person, and you start to self-identify and therefore perpetuate that myth and that experience in your own life. And the fact that you said, okay, we need to recognize we can't be the label, we can't self-identify as that label. And there are steps to move beyond that label and, and to create the mental health state that allows us to now identify as a person who can care for ourselves, who can love who we are and therefore make more empowered, better choices and, and evolve their physical, their mental and their spiritual lives to enrich their experience and their state and therefore live. And I love this about you. You're such an advocate for fulfilling potential and, and having a potential based life. And so it leads into that direction. It's a natural process. And how did that come about to, to bring that into a book state? Well, yeah, I, um, I knew that I wanted to share my story. And I, at first I was going to just write about um, the dep- like that I've had depression and anxiety. Again, I really was not willing to come out. You know, I felt, I almost felt like a closeted, you know, back in the, maybe this isn't politically correct to say, I'm not sure, but you know, back in the 1940s and 50s, it wasn't that Com- you know, it wasn't common to be out, out sexually, whether you were, hom- uh, they say, ho- homosexual, right? So um, um, I'm just getting a low battery notice here, just so you know. Yeah. Um, so for me, it really came about in terms of this desire to want to share my story and then I'm sort of outlining those four aspects, right? The physical, the mental, the emotional, and spiritual, and then breaking those down into what are the steps to take to support each of those levels. So that's how it it came. But I had to get over myself um, in order to like get over my fears of sharing about the bipolar piece of the puzzle, because that's the truth, right? I couldn't just speak about that one part because that's not that's not talking about holistically about the whole experience. And I think that these experiences that happen to me are the full range of human experience and the processes that I've had to go through to get to that place of love and acceptance of myself. So I'm not. Hopefully that answers your question. It does, and the, the, the book also then represents your own personal journey, but also a journey that other people will understand, perhaps have experienced themselves, and therefore will provide insight into the solution that is possible for them. And so the book yeah. therefore becomes not only an educational tool, it's also a, um, a, a process a person can relate to you through because of the experiences you've had, and therefore it becomes a way of helping create a connection within your practice. Would that be a fair and reasonable a way way of understanding and approaching the book that's right yeah that's right and i also you know and now and most people will find this that you know there's a lot of things that we do say over and over to every patient right and so for me you know writing those things down was part you know there's a chapter on the liver there's a chapter on diet there's a chapter on detoxification there's a chapter on the environment there's a chapter on stress management so these are all the things that i was already always saying So now it just helps me to sort of reinforce the teaching in clinic. If you come to see me as a patient, then I send you home with, okay, we just talked about this. Now go read that chapter in the book. Right. I love that part. So again, I know the phone's running and we want to bring this um, to a conclusion. So we don't lose the conversation, but can I just get you to dive just a little bit deeper on that process? So the book represents a way of sharing your message to the, potential patient coming into your practice of the conversations you repeatedly have, you can redirect them there and give them an understanding of the journey they're going to experience. So it becomes a wonderful interactive process of the consultation and de- de- developing the communication. Is that a reasonable understanding? That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because how many times when you're in the office with your patients, you'll, you'll spit, you know, you'll explain things to them and then they walk away and they're like, they might have said, gosh, I wish I had recorded that. Or they'll come back and say, okay, I, you know, I wasn't completely listening to you. And, and I, I know you talked about something about the relationship between my gut and my brain. What, what was that about again? Right? And so if you have it in a book format, then you can send them with that. And then they have that reference material to refer to. So for me, I've used it. Um, it's almost a prerequisite for me. If you're going to be in a patient of mine, you kind of need to read the book. Perfect. I love that. So yeah. To bring this to a conclusion, I'd like to know just one last thing that what does it mean for you to write the book? So obviously it helps the practice, it helps your clinical outcomes, it helps your relationship and builds the business. More than that though, what does it mean for you personally to write that book, to go through that writing journey? 
Yeah, you know, for me, it was really a, a very cathartic process to uh, be able to e express myself and quite freeing, actually, to actually be able to come public, to be, to be open about the experiences that I've had. And there's been some tough experiences in, in, that I do. I mean, not everything's in the book. I got to maybe save it for the save something for the next one. But um, there are a lot of experiences that I hope open people's eyes to creating more. Um, well, first of all, for, to really help people believe that they can actually heal from things like bipolar disorder, right, and and depression for that matter, and anxiety that you don't that there is a way to get to this place of healing and love and acceptance of you. And that you're not meant, to, I just don't think that we're all meant to suffer. I think there's a reason behind the suffering. And you just have to look, you know, keep looking and investigating all these stones that I talk about um, in the book, like the 10 steps, right? Every time that I might stumble slightly, I look back, okay, what have I tripped up on? So I know I'm going off on a tangent to, to answering your question, but really for me, it was, um, it, it's become very liberating. liberating. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, when I first hit that publish button, I got a little bit anxious because I was like, oh my God, what have I done, right? It's out there now. And I really had a lot of fear that I was going to lose my practice. People were going to no one was going to want to come and see somebody who has had these experiences that I've had and has actually been the complete opposite for me. I mean, I had a six month waiting list. Like it just, um, I, I can't say it enough, but, you know, being true to your soul, being true to your authenticity is really, uh, I think what is the most important thing. And so for me, it's been like, I don't identify with those labels anymore. So it's been, for me, it's been the best medicine that I could probably have given myself. It's beautiful. Thank you for that vulnerability and for sharing. And thank you for writing the book and you know, serving so many people on this planet with the need that they have for, for a support system in, in their mental health journey and for, for being such an important part of that. I think the message is very clear that, you know, people can, when they find their purpose, when they are able to share their message and, you know, to come to that place of vulnerability of, knowing that they can write and, and impact, then we can all be better for that. And the, the world becomes better for that as well. As you said, you can become busier, you can become more successful. More than that, you become authentic. And that is what we really are meant to be in practice as well. And that does allow you to have that relationship with people. Dr. Christina, I'm grateful for you, I'm grateful for your time. Your message is so powerful. And I, and I look forward to you know, people listening to this, watching this, and knowing that uh, this message is as much for them to get into that story and to be able to share that with, with that openness and that vulnerability so that they can change the lives of many people as well. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.